audience around the world. So, round of applause for David. Hello guys. So, once again, thank you for all coming. I'm glad that there are so many metaverse interested people. Uh, you already heard two presentations about the metaverses from Arthur and Adam. And I would call maybe my presentation something like Metaverse 103 or something like that. More advanced, where we will dive a little bit deeper into the technology behind it. And also, we will showcase kind of a cookbook how to enter these spaces and how to interact with them. So, I will start a little bit of history. It's not so like back history, it's a recent history. Uh, we are in the year 2020. Uh, the corona strikes are big, and everybody is forced to kind of leave the in person contact and move into the digital. And there are many digital areas which, which were growing in this field, like the multiplayer games, virtual experience, video call, digital avatars, all stuff like this. And it, we were forced kind of into it. And then 2021 came, and again, Corona didn't go away yet, and we had to adapt a little bit on, on, these, on these topics. And then one American guy, I don't know if you know him, but he has a small company and he renamed it for Meta. And it was kind of shocked, like, why would you rename a brand like Facebook to Meta? And it was kind of a beginning of push of these companies to get into the metaverse, metaverses. And also it introduces this term to general public. Like everybody knows what this metaverse or actually, actually they told they know. Because like we had these terms and voila, everything was metaverse. And, uh, you were seeing metaverse references on every corner. Like everything which was connected with the digital world or 3D was metaverse. And kind of, even though this term is kind of subjective, because like there is no like strict definition of it, we can like only guess or like be, be close to it. What I imagine be, uh, under this term is actually like the next generation of the internet. Because like there wouldn't be one metaverse who will rule them all. There will be multiple metaverses or meta spaces which will be connected by the internet and it will bring more of 3D, more of immersion, more of interactions into our life and communications. This being said, like I at least try to do some description or technical structure how the metaverse could be perceived. And I like the best perception I, I see is actually like a multi-layer system which consists of multi-field parts where there is a like big thing in the infrastructure because right now we are slowly onboarding on 5G and the fast internet which can be accessed anytime in the any, anywhere in the world. It's connected with also with the Starlink which also provides these connections into the rural areas of the world. Uh, we also have the other other technical uh, things like the powerful GPUs which are right now popping up and the speed which are increasing the powerful GPUs are really amazing and we can really allow to render stuff which couldn't be imagined before. Then there is the layer of the human uh, interface. We have more powerful devices. Right now everybody here in your in your hand or in your pocket has a powerful device which can run the augmented reality or the virtual reality or uh, really perform really good 3D experience. This is a big change. Like it's a thing which are here like for 10 years. It's not like uh, something low. It's a really connected also with the spatial computing, spatial computing itself. Where there is more and more software and hardware which allows us to experience the world uh, in a better and more immersive way. The other part which uh, it's really important also for the metaverse was actually covered also in the first uh, stage of these uh, talks and it's uh, decentralization. Because uh, 
metaverses should be, or the next generation of internet is keen to be more decentralized. And it actually means like kind of democratization of the internet. It's not like solely owned by the corporations or the uh, other, other top-down structures. It should be owned by you. Actually, and especially your data should be owned by you. And that's one of the key moments in the metaverses. Then we have another layers, like the creator's uh, economy, that's actually the NFT and the people are really can make without the middleman, the money of the, the, the metaverse. So that's kind of the technical. Uh, and right now, I would kind of start a simple, I would say, cookbook or the recipe. How you, like a brand or like an individual or a company, uh, have the way to join the metaverses, how to immerse and move your company to another level. Like in general, there are first way which is kind of easiest and which was also covered by uh, partially Arthur, which is go into the metaverse, buy a land there, build a house there, build a brand uh, branch there, or uh, let somebody build it for you. Have your presence in the multiple the metaverses like the Descent Brothers, Sandbox, Sonium Space, Neos VR. There's many uh, possibilities how to do it. And brands are really doing it. Like there's a lot of brands and Adam was covering it in his, uh, his speech. Uh, is onboarding on this. Then there's the second way. Like you don't want to be inside of other the metaverse. You want to own the metaverses. And there are like already tools and uh, platforms which are open source or allows the user to adapt it to, to their own. Like for example, the biggest example is actually Mozilla Hubs, which is open source engine, web browser application, which can be forked and you can make it for your own. Or if you want to be really personalized for your needs and you want to engage your users on the level which is really uh, of your needs, you can create it from your scratch. Like you can really go and start programming or pay somebody for programming. Okay. Yeah. The second step when you are talking about uh, you want to create or join the metaverse is to know your ideas. Like, there is a lot of early adapters in the metaverse spaces, which are mainly younger generation, but slowly they are getting also the business side of the, of the population and the older generation. So know what is your audience is like really a big thing because like you, want, you can decide if you want to go into the more gaming wise or the, more the business side. Another aspect or step three I would call is uh, to decide on which uh, immersion level you want to join. Because right now, how I said, like there are some multiple interfaces how you can enter the metaverse. You can enter the, either with the legacy gateways, it sounds like it's super old, but it's still modern phones, modern uh, tablets, modern PCs, laptops. Everywhere where you're communicating with the 3D environment, with the 2D screen. Uh, for example, these immersions can be like something like a second life. That's, that's the legacy gateway, that was how it works. Then you can go with a little bit more immersion and use the augmented reality. There was already mentioned about the light ship uh, of the Niantic, which are right now they acquired like the best web. AR company called 8 So right now they have like most powerful tools to do it and they are rolling out public uh, public SDKs to use it. So right now it's pretty easy to create also the augmented reality where you are seeing augmented reward like real world and you have you know, digital uh, digital elements inside of it. It's a big talk about it, but there is not much metaverses yet, but it's really expected when the uh, Apple will launch their glasses, it will roll out big. So, uh, to be honest, uh, we are hearing about the Apple glasses for the last eight years and it's always postponing, but next year for sure. Uh, and the, like, the biggest uh, level of immersion you can get is actually in the virtual reality or extended reality. 
they will really take the user inside of the metaverse, like in the social space, how Arthur was showing here. Like you can really be there, see everything around you, and be part of the world. And these are like kind of interfaces. These are not things which will like um, totally define the metaverse. Like it's important. Even I would say like the best case scenario is to have all these three possibilities for your metaverse. Like anybody can join with different solution, with different interface, and communicate together in one space or one network. The fourth step is actually kind of visual, more visual. It's like to pick what you imagine like you want to present to your uh, users visual. You can also like, the, and we are talking with the clients, they mostly like keen to have it most realistic as possible. Like you want to have a photorealism, you want to be um, like really immersed and don't distinguish it from other worlds. It came with some downsides because like when you are expecting realism, anything, even smallest detail like uh, different uh, physics uh, behavior can break this immersion. But it's really the holy grail to get there. Then we have a lot of stylized, uh, stylized uh, metaverses, which can be even inspired by some games. For example, a good example is the Ready Player One movie, which is like Oasis is really inspired by 80s and 90s game uh, and uh, pop culture. And then there's like no point, and actually, even so, it's like least interesting, uh, it's the uh, most common one because it's a uh, performing base and a lot of uh, things like the sandbox or the central are uh, heavily uh, reliant on this, this type of uh, visual aspects. So when we are, I, I will be summing up it, I'm, I want to build the metaverse. I want the perfect visual quality. I want the perfect interactivity. I want to be able to communicate with other users, with the environments. I want to be able to interact with them. And I want to have a perfect scalability. I want anybody to be able to easily join my world, to interact with others, to easy scale, to have onboarding. So this is how the perfect metaverse would look like. But it's maybe in the perfect world. We are not there yet. Like we are still in the early stages of the metaverses and uh, the XR in, in general. And right now everything is about the compromise. So there are so many spaces how, how to do it, but it's always some compromise and you are like sacrificing one of these three aspects. For example, if you look uh, on the bottom of the screen, that's the example of the Mozilla Hubs, which is like perfectly scalable solution. It's a web browser solution uh, where you can like invite somebody just sending him a link. He can join, he can join from phone, he can join from headset, he can join from desktop, he can join from any device. And it's the, that's the scalability. On the other hand, you have like advanced interactivity. You can pick up the uh, pick up the item. You can draw. You can uh, talk. You can change the environment around around yourself. Then we are on the right. We have the example of the when you want still the scalability, but you want the visual quality. In that case, uh, we are usually going for something called rendered environments or the limited interactivity environments, where you take the high quality modules or high quality items and pre-render them. Like you create a 360 photo from them or you can add their like lower interactivity. And then you can like achieve like really uh, good visual quality but still keep the uh, still keep the scalability. You can still send it by the link, open it on any device, on VR you can move around with, the, with your head, but you are limited on the interactivity. And then there is the third way on the left. It's where you want to keep the interactivity, want to keep the quality. And that's where you need to go for some application base. You need to create the specific application and mostly for the specific hardware. You need to request like the, it needs to run on the specific uh, 
uh, headset, for example, some 5 or 4K headset, and it needs to run on powerful GPU. For example, what uh, Arthur was showing, he was connected to his laptop, and everything was computed on the laptop. And if you want to join in the same quality, you need to have, have the similar similar hardware. And that's kind of a blocker for the for the I would say general public because not everybody has the headset, not everybody has a, a expensive a expensive GPU at all. And yeah, that's that's about it. And when we are like kind of, I would finish the visual part. And right now, to have your metaverse like a viable option for the users, you still need to be connected. Because how I said, it will be not one metaverse. It will be multiple meta spaces or metaverses which will be connected uh, by internet or next generation of internet. So you definitely need to be connected. You need to have uh, API integrations for other services like. The, uh, statistics, uh, uh, other, other, other things. <laughs> you need to have uh, data, data integrations. For example, there was mentioned the uh, Moya, which kind of do the integration of the assets. You need to have uh, even the integrations where you can communicate, where you can stream your, your services onto YouTube or uh, Twitch. And you also have to have the decentralized application, like where you can exchange the NFTs or something like that. And I know uh, it was like really, really intense, but it's a really big topic, and it's not possible to cover it in these these twenty minutes or so. So this is the thing: like you need to really understand it and get deep enough under it. And if there is a shortcut, yes, maybe the best way is to get a professional. Like get somebody who understands it and can explain it. And that's where the York comes. <laughs> uh, we actually, that's, that's something actually what we do. We, we work like a technical partner for brands or with the technical companies, startups, corporations. And we help them to understand the metaverse, but just not on the, like the, higher level, but we are really doing the development. We understand how it's done and what to do. We are right now about 35 professionals. We already work on 60 plus Metaverse projects and we will actually acknowledge like the top three uh, agency on the Metaverse in the world. And yeah, we all, uh, like right now we are fo focused here in Prague, but we have branches in the UK and uh, New York, and we are working with the top branches and corporations. And if you have any questions, uh, I don't think we have the time right now, but I will be joining the panel discussion later, or you can just catch me here or upstairs on the York stand, and I will be eager to speak with you about your ideas or your point of view on the metaverses. Thank you for your attention.